WDBO. Let's go ahead and pop over to Orlando, where Jeff's calling about his 2002 Saturn. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Larry, I got a 2002 Saturn. It, you go to the gas station, get gas, you turn the key off, get back in it, turn the ignition, and nothing happens. It's not a dead battery. Um, I changed the BCM module, and that had it running fine for about two months, and then it started doing the same thing over again. Okay. Well, uh, you know, there could be a... Now, when you turn when you say you put the key in the ignition and you turn it, you don't have no click, no cracking, no nothing. No noise, complete silence. The dash lights are on. You can turn the radio on. You can blow the horn, turn on headlights, but it's just a silent... Everything on the dash will black out as you do that, but then you, as soon as you release the key, all the lights are on, and... First time it happened, it took 10 minutes and cranked back up, and then it got where you knew not to go mess with it for a couple hours, but it was religiously over and over. It would always crank up again. Okay. Well, Jeff, the way that this is, do you have a separate starter relay on this car? I don't have the wiring schematic in front of me. I'm sure that if you've replaced the BCM, you've probably visited this. Um, Is there a separate starter relay for it? Not that I know of. Well, what what's going to need to be and done? With the base model. There's... Okay. Well, it 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 still could use a a starter relay. Some some vehicles use a starter relay. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it, it it that's something that you're going to probably need to find out. For, I wish I had the wiring schematic in front of me, uh, but I didn't have time to pull it up because I just now learned what was going on with it. But a person's going to need to look at the wiring schematic, see if there is a starter relay for this. But the bottom line is, Jeff, what's going to need to be done, uh, you're going to need to take a test slot. Um, and, you know, if it does have a starter relay, you're going to have to go to the terminal that's actually uh, make sure there's power at the um, uh, you, person's going to need to remove the relay. Um, and then they're going to mm-hmm. need to take the test light into the terminals and make sure there is a 12 volt power there, which I'm, I'm sure they probably will be. Then a person is going to need to take and probe each one of the wires while somebody is turning the key to find out if one is getting uh, power and illuminating the test light whenever you crank it over. Yeah. Um, and and, and, yeah. and that's going to need to be done. And then if there's if there's no issue there and there's power at a relay, or if it doesn't have a relay, then a person is going to need to go to the uh, wire on the solenoid of the starter. Uh, You know, when you turn the key, you're going to have to have power from the ignition switch, either to a relay or either it's going to be going directly to the starter solenoid itself. But you're going to need to find Mm -hmm. out if it's going to light up the, the test light down at the starter solenoid. If it is, it's a bad starter. If you don't get power there, then you're going to have to backtrack either to a relay uh, and on back to the ignition switch. Uh, And then we have another issue to where on that vehicle, I don't know if it uses a pass key system for an anti-theft. You know, a lot of the vehicles have to have uh, the, you, what it is. You put the key in, and then the tumbler is actually read from an anti-theft system in order to verify that it's got the correct key. Somebody's not stealing the car and allow voltage to actually go to the starter itself. So, so there's a few That's things. What it's for. Okay, and it, also when you're driving it, uh, sometimes the gas gauge and the tachometer would just drop to zero sporadically. And then just then, then just come back. You know what? I'm going to tell you right now, Jeff, that has all the makings of a possible bad uh, ignition switch. Uh, you know, we, we, you know, if you get one that's losing, you know, power like that to the dash or whatever, you're losing accessory power, you know, and, and see, that's the same as it, it being on your run circuit of that ignition switch. And, you know, something could be coming apart inside the ignition switch itself. And it's, it's you know, these, these types of problems are very hard to diagnose. And these are the types of things that happen on a vehicle that's 20 years old. You know, it, it's just those contacts inside that ignition switch are wore out. 
And whenever you go to crank it or, you know, you're running, driving down the road, you hit a little bit of a bump or something, all of a sudden your gauges go blank uh, or quit working. And those are the signs of a bad ignition switch. So, you know, I would still run the circuit tests with a, with a 12 volt test light, which it isn't hard to do, but you need to look in your fuse and relay center underneath the hood and see if any of those relays are marked start or starter. Um, and if they are, you need to do your circuit test there first to start with. And then that's going to verify if you're getting power from the ignition switch there or not. Just keep probing all those terminals until you find out whether you got power there when somebody's cranking it. You're going to have one power constant. But uh, you get it checked out, send me a, an email, larry at magicmechanic.com, and we'll, we'll walk through this thing and get it handled for you.